Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace on heaven and glory in the highest. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the holy spirit now and forever amen amen Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Hymn number 154. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children their sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel, the David's royal Son, who in the Lord's name comest, the King and Blessed One. O glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children their sweet hosannas ring. The people of the Hebrews with palms before they went our prayers and prayers and anthems 
before thee we present all glory, Lord, and honor for the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children is with Hosanna's ring. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ears to listen as those who are taught. The Lord of God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like first, like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare my, me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. <clears throat> An excerpt from Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors. A dismay to those of my acquaintance, when they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten, like a dead man out of mind. I am useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of the, my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Hymn number 370, verse 6. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, 
Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Passion Gospel is this morning is the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, read in four parts. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard or the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some fawns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, O king of Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put on his own clothes, and they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to a place called Gogotha, which means in the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh. He did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, cast in lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who could destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. 
At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And then the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last. He said, truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words that I say and the words that you hear be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There are two ways one can approach pain and discomfort, through it or around it. Around it is certainly the path more commonly taken. We avoid discomfort. We do what we can to avoid the feeling of pain, loss, grief. We distract ourselves. We binge watch. We binge eat. We do what we can do to distract our minds from the things that disturb us. But the funny thing about pain and discomfort is it comes back. The body knows the score. As much as we want to try to ignore it, it's going to come back either through a change of pain, anxiety, depression. Truly, the only way to address pain is through it. To look at it straight in the eye. To address it, its impact on our lives, ourselves, our emotions, our souls. When I start to address pain, my default response is pity, pity for myself. Oftentimes it's a pity party for one. I know there are some of you on this call who have received invitations to my pity party, who have met me in my pain. Maybe you yourselves have sent out those invitations to invite people into that distress with you. It's very likely that there have been moments 
in this last year plus now that you have thrown your own pity party for one. A chance for you to isolate yourself from the ones that you love, the ones that can help heal, can help you address, walk through that pain with you. Even in our isolation, I hope, I pray that this is not always the case for you, that you've been able to take an opportunity to reach out to the loved ones and not do this alone. I need my God on the cross. I need the pain of Palm Sunday and Good Friday as much as I need Easter, if not in these times, maybe more so. I need to know that the perfect example of God's love knows pain. I need to know that when given the opportunity, God did not try to walk around pain, but walked through it, his path, the passion, and the cross. This Sunday represents to us two things. One, it is a reminder that we do not do this alone, that in our pain, our suffering, our discomfort, our wounds, our trauma. We walk this path with a God who knows pain. We walk this path as a community of Christians in the name of the Christ on the cross that we do not do pain alone. We walk side by side together, either in true partnership at home, picking up the phone, united in prayer, but knowing that we are not alone. The other thing that this Palm Sunday reminds us is that even as soon after the triumphant procession, God, God's self, finds God on the cross. Not simply an act of pain or service, but of love. And while we also celebrate the resurrection there on the cross, at that moment, God also stays. God is present, awoken in the tomb, which we will rightfully celebrate next week. God, but God also stays present on the cross, the God of the crucifixion. Because on that cross, God remains for us a lifetime a worldwide reminder that that death is for us, both for our salvation from sin, an invitation into eternal life, but an invitation into the present moment to be reminded that God is not a God distant of our pain and suffering, but God knows it just as much as I do, as you do, and as we do, as we approach language that sounds like a light at the end of the tunnel, for many of us, we will explore the long-term implications of this year of quarantine for years, decades, and probably even centuries to come. As we continue to move forward, we are not alone in that pursuit of understanding as we look back upon the trauma of the last year, the God that is before us is the same God that was behind us, walking with us each and every step of the way through the darkness, into the light, and maybe back and forth a few times too. On this Palm Sunday, as we mourn the death of the incarnation on the cross, we do so within the tension of the pain and hurt, knowing that our humanity is capable of condemning an innocent man to death, but also in thanksgiving that in God's innocence, we are given the gift of a reminder that the God who loves us also suffers along with us. This Palm Sunday, as we are invited into an observance of a holy week, 
leading up to the Easter resurrection. Let us keep our minds pondered on the cross, the conflicting image of death and life, pain and unity. Let the cross this week be a reminder for you, for me, for us, that we do not do this alone. Amen. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of Londonderry, for our surrounding communities and every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. This week, please hold the following people in your prayers. Judy, Reggie, Bill, Jean, Anna, Mary, Natalie, Catherine, Linda, Pam, Reverend Joe, Cheryl, Steve, Carol, Pauline, Connie, Sully, Carol, Bill, Karen, Diane, Benjamin, Jane, Penny, June, Robert, Ed, Beckett, Kim, Laurie, Penny, Myra, Susan, John, Gay, Kathy, Deanie, Mary, Grace, Laurette, Oliver, Anne, Beverly, Dawn, Peter, Denny, Joan, Nancy, Suzanne, Tiffany, Sharon, Jane, Michael, and Sarah. We pray for those who have died. Jake Nair, Sandy Rich. We pray for those in our parish cycle of prayer. Sandra Perry, Linda Poole, Gail Pratt. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, 
heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the communion of the Blessed Mother Mary, Peter, our patron saint, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, to thee O, o Lord, Lord our, our God. God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and your compassion. Look upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Feel free to peace, pass the peace in our Zoom chat with each other through their windows. Peace to Emery, Michael, Diane, and Sally. We thought this Sunday as more of this community becomes vaccinated, we can start this slow process of inviting more of our ministers into this live process of worship. So we're very happy to have Sally with us this morning. We're happy you are here on this Palm Sunday. Many of you were able to come by over the last few days and gather some palms for this service. If you'd like to pick up palms anytime this week leading up to Easter, um, we invite you to do so. They will be in a large vase outside of the front door. They will be these palms here, so they are already blessed. As we move through Holy Week, there are a few opportunities I'd like to share with you. The diocese is offering worship all week long, every evening. There's a link in your parish email, as well as the diocesan website. Uh, one service in particular I draw your attention to is on Saturday. Uh, we will join the diocese for the Great Easter Vigil. In the past, we have had the vigil here. I imagine next year we'll continue to have it here. But we do have the opportunity that this year, Bishop Rob will uh, have uh, lit the Easter flame and bless the pastel candle uh, here in our own memorial garden. So we invite you into that service and see a little bit of St. Peter's as an offering to the greater diocesan worship experience. Then, of course, on Easter Sunday, a week from this morning, we will gloriously gather in some capacity together. If the weather is nice, as long as it's not raining and windy, we will be outside. If it's warm enough, we will be outside of our cars, still in an area of the parking lot so we can have room to spread out. Bring your lawn chairs. If it's cold, uh, we will um, be inside of our cars as we've done the uh, drive in Eucharist. Uh, if it's terrible weather, we will gloriously and happily worship the resurrection of our Lord uh, here on Zoom as we've done for the last year, uh, knowing that soon and very soon we can worship together in this space. Glad you are here this morning. Ascribe the Lord, all honor and glory do his name, bring offerings and come into his courts. Our offertory hymn this morning is number 167. There is a green hill far away 
outside a city wall, where our dear Lord was crucified, who died to save us all. We may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us he hung and suffered He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to him, saved by his precious blood. There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Oh, dearly, dearly has he loved, and we must love him too, and trust in his redeeming blood and try his works to do. This mere wooden and felt plate represents for us so many things. It represents the gifts you have given this church through your time, energy, and prayer, but also those financial gifts that you've sent in through the mail, through your bank, PayPal, to which we're very grateful. This plate also represents though those things that we have received from God, those mysteries, those miracles. We symbolically place them in this plate, raise them up as an offering to God, as a reminder that all things come from thee, O Lord. And of thine own uh, have we given thee. Our service of Holy Eucharist continues this morning with Eucharistic Prayer B found on page 367 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his sacrifice and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of, of power, power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. What am I doing? Lift, it's not time to lift it up. 
the things you do a thousand times, right? Try again. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be your savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my body. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with our patron Saint Peter, the Blessed Mother Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Lord, in sacrifice to die. Is this thy sorrow not to us, who pass unheeding by? This is earth's darkest hour, but thou didst light and life restore. Then let all praise be given thee, who livest evermore. Grant us with thee to suffer pain, that as we share this hour, thy cross may bring us to thy joy, and resurrection's power. Alone thou goest, both, O Lord, in sacrifice to die. Is this thy sorrow not to us who pass on heeding by? Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A prayer for those who cannot be with us today. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this. Hmm, wrong prayer. My Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and long for you in our soul. Since we cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never feel separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and the life to come. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns for you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.